Um, and now uh, back to our original topic, BA studies at CEU. Today's session is um, dedicated to our new bachelor's program in quantitative social sciences. We are recording this session and we will make it available um, on the website later. So all guests are muted. And if you don't wish to appear on the recording, please make sure to keep your cameras off. We invite you to send us questions in the chat box and we will answer those at the end of the discussion. My name is Andrea Vaghi. I'm the undergraduate student outreach specialist um, at CU and our speakers today are Professor Tiago Peixoto, um, the head of the new uh, BA in QSS program. Uh, Professor Janos Kertész, head of the Department of Network and Data Science at CU, and Manran Zhu, PhD student at the Department of Network and Data Science. Uh, let's start with, with a big, uh, quick uh, round of a bit more personal introductions. Tiago, would you mind starting? And I'd like to ask you to, to say where you're from, where did you study, what did you study, what do you do at CU, and what is your connection with the uh, QSS program? Uh, thank sure. Thank you very much, Andrea. So my name is Tiago. I I am a physicist by training. I I got my PhD at the University of São Paulo in Brazil, and I did a large part, large part of my career in Germany, uh, in Bremen and in Darmstadt, and then I, and some years also in the United Kingdom. And now I am uh, associate professor here at the Department of Network and Data Science at the Central European University. And I work uh, mainly with uh, network science, which is you know the study of systems that can that are built up of connections, you know, like the internet or friendship between people, etc. Of course, from a quantitative and mathematical uh, perspective. Thank you, um, Janos. Would you go next, please? Thank you. Uh, I am also with a natural science background. I uh, graduated in Budapest and uh, worked there for a very long time. Uh, I have been uh, working on uh, interdisciplinary topics for three decades already. Uh, and uh, I'm now the head of department of the Department of Net Network and Data Science. Uh, I am uh, mostly working on uh, network science topics, perhaps a little more applied as compared to what Tiago does. Uh, we are interested in how data about people can be mapped to networks and what can be learned about people from this mapping. Thank you. Can you also just say very quickly, what, why are you on this webinar and uh, what's your connection with the uh, bachelor's program? Well, as the head of department, uh, this is, uh, so to speak, our uh, BA program. Uh, we, we feel it uh, as our child, so to speak. Of course, Diago is the head of the program, but we all uh, stand back, uh, uh, stay behind it and, and work on its success. Thank you. Uh, Manran, would you uh, like to ask you? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Manran and um, I'm, uh, I'm from China and I'm a, a senior PhD student at the Department of uh, Network and Data Science at CEU. And um, I was trained as a physicist um, in China uh, in my bachelor's and then I did my master in Zurich also in physics, but uh, mainly on applying physical methods to study uh, social systems. And uh, then I uh, came to Budapest uh, for this PhD program. And um, yeah, and uh, by the way, Janos is my supervisor. So I'm <laughs> very happy to join this community here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so here's our agenda for today. Um, we are very ambitious, but like to cover six areas. Um, and we will try to save about 10, 15 minutes at the end for our questions and answers. Um, we will have to be quick to cover everything. So this is really just a teaser uh, that will hopefully raise your interest and, and make you want to learn more about this exciting and unique uh, new BA program. So starting at the beginning, uh, our first topic is what is quantitative social sciences? Tiago, I'm turning to you as the head of the program. Perhaps we could start by explaining the terms uh, in the name of the program, quantitative social sciences. 
what do these mean and how do they come together in a B BA program? Can you also provide a brief explanation of what quantitative versus qualitative methods me mean in this context? Sure, of course. So the idea of the QSS of the Quantitative uh, Social Science uh, Program is to bring uh, together the study, study of human societies, that's the social science aspect, but together with a rigorous foundation in mathematics, statistics, computation, and data science. And this is the, uh, the quantitative part, right? So we want to, from the get-go, uh, uh, base ourselves with, with mathematics, with numbers, right? So it is an inter interdisciplinary program, right? Which brings, is, which uh, encompasses, encompasses all the necessary skills uh, to extract understanding from data, right? So that's a big mm -hmm. part of it. So there is now quite a bit of data available on human behavior, on human societies, and we cannot make sense of this, uh, and we cannot do things like analysis and prediction without uh, uh, taking a quantitative stance, right? So this is the, this is the main um, nature of the program. Okay, um, so CU has uh, two other BA programs. We started undergraduate education at CU with a BA in politics, philosophy, and economics, and with a, with a program in culture, politics, and society. These two programs are already running. We have students studying these programs uh, on our campus in Vienna. And um, we, we are launching this third program. Can you talk a little bit about why did CU decide to launch specifically this BA in, in quantitative so social sciences and the, as their third undergraduate program? Why is such a program needed? So this, is, uh, this program is needed because it's a, it's a very important area of research uh, that does not have a corresponding uh, program, you know, it, we are very unique. We're not aware of anything similar uh, in these areas, right? So we need, there is need to understand all this data on human societies at the moment. We need professionals and, uh, and researchers that uh, know the foundations. So the foundations both of social sciences, I'm talking about sociology, economics, environmental science, political science, but also mathematics, statistics, computation, etc. at the same level. And this is something that is very rare, right? So to give a, just a, one example, today is election day in the United States, right? Uh, uh, and you see these, we these uh, websites like 538 who attempt to do prediction, right? Who is going to win, etc. So of course you want to do this well. So naturally this requires uh, mathematics and statistics to build and work with these models, but it cannot be done without a proper and deep understanding of political science. Uh, and so these things go hand in hand. And very often it is the case that people who end up doing this or who are required to do this, they come from one field, say mathematics, statistics, uh, even physics, etc. And then they kind of learn sociology, etc. a little bit later on or the other way around. And we feel this is rather suboptimal. I think that we're missing here an opportunity of, of, of forming the next generation of researchers who are versant in both of these fields. So this is the, this is the motivation. Thank you. Um, a third um, uh, question that I have to you um, is about specifically this program at C. What makes it um, unique? Why is um, um, studying a, a BA program like this at CEU unique? That's a very good point. So, so we have a very strong background in the social sciences. Uh, there are programs at our university that offer very good, uh, I think, uh, uh, programs on, say, computational social sciences or things that, well, at least that's the way it's called, but mostly these courses are deeply rooted in computer science, some very, some very established, uh, 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 that some very established mathematical field like this. We, on the other hand, we have a very strong uh, background in, uh, in actual sort of proper, so to speak, social sciences, right? We, ha there, there, we have departments of, of sociology, economics, environmental science, political science, et cetera, who do this natively, so to speak. And this will be, uh, be, a, be a, this will be a large part of the BA program. On the other hand, we also have from our department, the Department of Natural Data Science, also a very strong uh, pillar, right, of uh, in, in the mathematical, statistical, and computational fields as well. So we, what, what, 
what I'm saying is that we can then combine these two things in a very robust way in this program, which is, I think, very unusual and very atypical. Exactly. Thank you. Um, what I would also add is just um, something, a few things that are pretty much true for all the programs at CEU, but specifically interesting for, for incoming undergraduate students, is that CEU is a very small university. Uh, we have currently about 1,500 students across um, 52 programs, out of which right now two are at the undergraduate level. So that means a really small class size a very, very exceptionally low student to faculty ratio. Very diverse classrooms too, because CEU is one of the most densely international universities in the world, uh, where it very often happens that um, there are no two students who are um, uh, in the same classroom and from the same country. So this provides a very um, a special environment to study uh, society in. Um, mm -hmm. And also the classes are discussion-based. Um, learning is very much designed to be hands-on. Um, um, and, and, but of course, also a, a, a good and balanced combination of theory and practice. Um, and our BA students can go on internships. Um, they have exchange opportunities. They will be doing a thesis and a capstone project. So um, it's basically the undergraduate education at CEU. Um, um, accumulates uh, the best practices of European and, and, uh, and uh, American undergraduate education. On to our second question. Um, I would like to us to talk a little bit about um, who this BA program is meant for. Um, Janos, what, what kind of high school students did you have in mind when you designed this program? Can you talk about some of the academic and personal characteristics of a high school student who would be a good fit for the BA in quantitative social sciences? Sure. <clears throat> uh, this follows from what Tiago said about the character of the program. There are high, stu high school students who uh, are very good at math, and programming and dislike uh, subjects like, uh, like uh, political science or, uh, or sociology. And on the other hand, there are students who are very good at those disciplines, but find mathematics ugly. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there is a third category of students who are good at math and computing, but have also an open mind to human related subjects. And our focus is on those students. We want them to join us because we think that this is the future. Uh, we realize that data have got highest importance in all subjects, whatever, wherever you look, uh, you, can, you can go to environmental science, you can go to sociology, you can go to political science, everywhere data are there and you have to start from them. And in order to be able to, uh, to analyze data, you have to be educated in mathematics and computing. So we are looking for those students who have these characteristics, they, who are either very interested in social sciences or, or socially related subjects, doesn't have to be a science, uh, but have also skills to uh, mathematics and computing, or the other way around, those who are very good at math and computing, but are also open uh, to deal with those subjects covered by, by social science. Yes, thank you. Um, I would also add um, a, a couple of things that are just, um, you know, uh, true in generally uh, for, for, for students that we are hoping to, um, to see in the program. So in terms of academics, we are really looking for, for well-rounded students who have solid study skills, who are used to studying and learning hard, who find, uh, who are not afraid of studying hard. Um, and who have strong grades across the board uh, with a, some kind of um, competence or you know, proven competence in, in, in quantitative subjects like mathematics or physics or computer science. 
But um, in terms of personality, we, we are also thinking of, of students who are brave, who are excited um, to try out something new. We really believe that there are many students out there who are who excel in computer science, who are fascinated by programming, but who actually never thought about um, going outside the traditional career path uh, for a computer science um, individual. Um, and we invite you to think about um, the possibilities that, um, uh, that, that we offer in, in this sense, that it is possible to use your math, strong math and quantitative skills um, but not follow a traditional um, and path and, and use data or data analysis to, um, uh, let's say, figure out how to sell a product to more people, but rather to look at um, uh, the society, the problems around us, the issue that we are facing, and try to use your knowledge in math um, in order to find solutions uh, to these problems. Um, I would like to, thanks Janusz, thank, th thank you very much for the answer. I would like to turn to uh, Mandran now, mm -hmm. uh, since we have no current students in this program yet. And um, today, in this session, you are the closest, um, at yeah. least in time or in age to a high school student. Would you mind sharing your own story? Um, you started out in a traditional science BA program. What mm -hmm. was that like and how come that you ended up uh, studying networks at CEU? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So um, I think for me, I, I falls into the, uh, the, the category of uh, high school students that Janusz just described that uh, I'm, I was interested in math and physics, but also have an interest for human related topics. And I remember when I uh, went to college, uh, I, I was in the traditional physics department, but I also took courses from the uh, brain science. It's called brain science. And uh, because I'm interested in how the human brain works. Um, but I didn't have a very good experience uh, with uh, integrating these uh, two fields of research because um, basically I, we, I was not exposed to, um, to this human related research in, back in my uh, college. The only uh, depart, uh, a group that did similar um, things that's close to human related uh, things was they study uh, traffic. So how traffic jams emerge and how can we model it and uh, solve this problem uh, in a scientific way. But when I talked to my uh, fellow students that how interesting this topic was, um, many of my friends, I didn't understand why I was interested in this kind of topics instead of you know, quantum computer or um, um, particle colliders. So, um, but then I went to Zurich um, um, for um, master uh, study. And there I finally find the community. So the, um, I took several courses uh, that uh, hold jointly by the Department of Physics and also Department of Management Science. So um, I remember there was this uh, course called agent-based modeling. So uh, as a co course project, I actually studied uh, how people vote. Like um, if the, initially there are different opinions and we influence each other and in the end, uh, how uh, the results can uh, become. And it was very interesting. And um, then I realized this is the field actually I want to um, further study uh, in. So I uh, applied for the PhD program in, in, in Budapest. And I think for high school students, it's really uh, uh, lucky that they have this uh, opportunity to study in a BA program like this, because um, I think at an uh, early stage of life, if you could find your community, people that share the same interest with you, then you would have, um, don't need to have much struggle with to justify your interest, but instead you could learn really fast and with the help of all the uh, teachers and students. So, yeah. That's true, that, that's very true. <laughs> Thank you, Manu. Actually, the world is becoming so more and more complex that um, we simply um, cannot, um, uh, studying in, 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 in very traditional, um, um, you know, in si things in silos um, that was helpful maybe 50 or 70 years ago uh, is um, less and less uh, effective today. So that's why we need more, more um, communication between disciplines and also programs that allow students to um, to study, um, uh, to, to, to try and find, find solutions by um, looking at different disciplines at the same time. 
So let okay. me just say something very quickly, yeah. maybe. Absolutely. So yes, uh, just uh, for somebody like Maran to su succeed like she has and become an interdisciplinary scientist, as she, has, as she just has said, it requires quite a bit of serendipity. Right, you have to somehow figure know the right people, and it requires a bit of luck. And you're not, you know, this is what we want to to prevent. You want to enable people that uh, want to study this to start start from from the beginning with the, in, with interdisciplinarity and have a path, a path of all the way from the undergrad studies to you know and to up and beyond right and this is something that uh, as far as we are, are aware does not exist yet and that's precisely the reason why you want to, to do this yes thank you um i'm actually turning again to you tiago um we will i would like us to talk a little bit about the structure of the program so what how should um high school students imagine in these four years at CU? Yes, so the four years are divided, roughly speaking, uh, in two halves. So the, the first two years, uh, there are some mandatory courses uh, where the student's going to learn quite a bit about mathematics, uh, programming data analysis, and also fundamental concepts of uh, the different branches of uh, social sciences. And then starting on the second year, going all the way to the, four, to the, to the, to the third and fourth year, uh, they're going to continue with these core modules, but they're going to progressively uh, have the option to choose uh, elective courses. Now, these elective courses are divided into five specialization tracks, which are, uh, are going to be, be their majors and minors, depending. So these are the specializations on sociology, economics, environmental sciences, political science, and data science. So the student... Uh, gets to choose two of those topics. And then these, these topics are going to define which courses they can take, uh, right? So this is something that it's up to the taste of the student to define exactly how they're going to uh, specialize themselves. And uh, then later on during this, this period where they take uh, these, op these, these elective courses on, this, on these topics, they also do a thesis project uh, and a capstone project in the end. So this is roughly the, the structure of the program. Okay, um, a couple of things um, I'd like to um, ask to, to also talk about. So um, what is the balance of social sciences and quantitative um, um, training in this program? Yeah, so this is a very important point. So this is not a course, uh, a program where you're going to do a bunch of mathematics and then some little bit of social science topics or the other way around. It's really split in the middle, right? So there's going to be, a, it's essentially going to be a 50-50 uh, program on, on the different aspects of social science, the core elements of social science, and the core fundamental aspects of mathematics, programming, statistics, and data science. So this is very important here. This is very different. So we, we, this is, I like to emphasize that when you are, the student is doing a mathematics course, uh, this is going to be essentially equivalent to, you know, what a, a physicist would learn in a mathematics course. When the student you know, in QSS is taking a course on political science, it's going to be essentially equivalent to what a student in political science uh, would be taking. So these courses are really going to be bona fide uh, elementary courses on these disciplines. And this is precisely the mixture that's going to allow the student to be really unique because there's, it's, going to, it's, it's supposed to be legitimate. Thank you. Um, speaking of math and programming, one question that I one question that I that we often get from prospective students is that, what do you mean programming? Are they going to actually train me on how, or teach me how to code and how to program? Is is that true? And and if yes, what programming language are are our students going to learn? Yes, absolutely. They're going to learn how to program. You know, at the university level, this is going to be a serious programming uh, training. Uh, the programming language you're going to use most for the teaching is, is going to be based on Python. But it's important here to, to emphasize that uh, the, the, the level uh, at the university level barely matters really which programming language you are using. What you're going to be most, uh, most importantly, what you're going to learning is how to program. And this is something that transcends programming languages. So... Uh, students who go through to this training are going to be 
uh, they should be very good programmers. So they should be able to switch from languages and, and, and do research and, uh, and, take a, and take a professional career, which does require programming at a very proficient level. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that um, students at the, at the beginning or from the second year on uh, will have to pick two of the five major tracks. So either sociology, economics, environmental science, political science, or data science. And they will continue with these two in year two and three. Um, and then in year four, they either drop one or they could keep also both of them. Um, and they will also have to take mandatory electives that are um, in, the, uh, in, in these fields. Uh, but there are also free electives that they could take. So what does that mean? So the free electives are, are courses that could, could be taken anywhere in the university at the student's discretion without any constraint. So if they want to take something in the humanities, they can do it. Uh, it's up to them. So this is something that they can do, use to satisfy their own intellectual curiosity. So they're going to have opportunity to do this in the third and fourth year. Yes, the other two programs offer a lot of um, different disciplines, um, about, I think, 13 or 14 um, a lot of things from gender studies to international relations, nationalism studies, uh, human rights, um, philosophy, um, a lot of things that are not part of the QSS program, but um, within the free electives, uh, students will be able to choose from yes. some of those two. Exactly. This is a CU is a university, and students should have a full university experience. So they are able, they should be able to uh, to probe and sample from the full menu. Okay, um, uh, I would like to add here that uh, we mentioned internships and study abroad. Um, so the study abroad experience uh, will most typically happen in the third year. That's when typically uh, bachelor students will be able to spend a term or two or a semester or two abroad. Um, and right now we have mentioned this in our other webinars. I'm just quickly going to mention a, a few of the um, universities that we already have um, an agreement with at the undergraduate level for exchange. Um, and these are Sciences Po in France, uh, the Sc Stockholm School of Economics in Sweden, um, Bard College, both the New York and the Berlin uh, campuses, and Bocconi University in Milan. And am I forgetting something? I think there were four or five. Anyway, so there is a, a nice selection and um, I'd like to add that this network is obviously uh, continuously growing um, as, the, as we are developing the undergraduate studies at CEU. The university already has a lot of uh, institutional connections and very many um, exchange agreements with universities all over the world at the graduate level. And we are going to develop those agreements for the undergraduate level as well. Um, in terms of um, hands-on and um, hands-on learning and experiential learning and internships, do you have anything to add here, Tiago? Yeah, so let me say that uh, because of the small uh, sizes of the, uh, the small number of students in the classrooms, this is supposed to be a very active learning environment where the students take uh, uh, they, are, they take a very active role. So there will be quite there will be made. Throughout the course, there will be many projects and many presentations, many things they have to do themselves instead of just uh, watching uh, a lecture. Uh, they're also going to have essentially two projects that they're going to have to do. One is the, uh, the thesis project and later a more elaborate capstone project. So should, and this is going to be done uh, together with uh, advisors from the faculty. So they're going to have uh, supervisors that are going to guide them through this. Uh, so students are going to have a lot to, a lot of opportunities to learn by doing, right? And this is a very important aspect of this program. Thank you. Um, we are moving on to our uh, next point, which is admissions requirements and, the, and a little bit about the procedure. Um, so on the slide, you can see the general requirements that apply to applicants of all BA programs. Um, and I would like to add some special QSS requirements and a few tips on, on, on how you can um, make your um, application stand out and be specifically relevant for the QSS program. Um, so I would like to start with the high school credentials. 
Here, we would like to see your academic potential, students' academic potential. So the first thing we look at is what did you study in high school and how did you do in each subject and overall? Um, now, because the QSS program has this strong quantitative part, uh, we also need to make sure that admitted students have the necessary skills to be successful in this program. So therefore, we ask applicants to, pro to provide some proof of competence in math or physics, anything quantitative. Um, so one way um, to show this is the, is the high school results in these subjects, in math, physics. Um, another way is if someone, um, uh, a student is, for example, stretching themselves to take higher level courses in high school, if that's an option in these specific subjects. Um, yet others are uh, taking standardized, so-called standardized tests, such as SATs, ACTs, advanced placement courses. These are not compulsory to take, so we do not require that students take an SAT or ACT. Uh, but if someone took any of these, we would like to see the results, especially if, they, you, can, if you are proud of those results. Um, and finally, if the evidence uh, that is available to us from your transcript and other additional documents um, it does not suffice for some reason, uh, some applicants may be asked to take the CUMF test. This will be by invitation only, and those who need to take uh, the test will be notified. So at this point, you don't need to, to worry about this. In terms of CV, so here we would like to see, first of all, of course, your education history. Uh, but also your academic and other competitions, any prizes if, if applicable, but also any meaningful extracurricular activity um, that you engaged in, including sports, music, art, volunteering, activism. Um, our advice is that you show CEU how you like to spend your free time when you're not at school, what kind of activities you engage in, and, and what are your interests as a person. Um, and then for QSS, think about activities to include that would be relevant. Anything that is, um, you know, a connection between your interest in computers or math and, um, you know, social issues. Any, um, you know, any activity that could be related to your interest um, and dedication or passion about the things that are happening around you in the world. Um, in terms of the application essay, so this is again of all three programs are requiring um, a 500 word essay with concrete instructions on the website. <clears throat> so here we would like um, you to show us what topic interests you from the world around you. Uh, how do you think about those topics and, and how you can express yourself uh, succinctly in writing. Anything else to add, Tiago, here? Uh, not very much. I think this was very accurate, right? So just just point out that we are we want to be as inclusive as possible with respect to different backgrounds, different you know, geographical regions, origins. So please just send the information that we have uh, that you have, so uh, we will make a decision. So we want to be as uh, uh, inclusive as as we can. Thank you. In terms of the motivation letter, this doesn't require a lot of explanation, but again. Um, this is the place where you can express why, what, what attracted you to see you, what attracted, what attracts you to this particular program, and how do you see yourself become a, a part of this community? Yeah, um, let me just say you, something yeah. very quickly. Sorry, uh, Andrea. So, uh, yeah, so we, we, because the program is just starting, we are in fact, uh, as Janos mentioned, we have, a, we want this kind of different student that comes uh, right it's interested in both of these things so if you ha if you think you you fit uh, uh, this would be good for you to talk about this in your, app your application right so uh, so, uh, so any so any kind of information you can give with respect to this would be very useful for us so, sorry. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the recommendation letter. So right now we are asking for one recommendation. Again, the important thing here is that your recommender knows you well, and and it's also important that you explain what program you are um, applying to. Um, um, you know, be brave and and explain um, uh, the the um, the special aspect of the QSS program if you if you are applying to this and ask your recommender to put something, some thoughts 
or some examples of your schoolwork or, or, or your of how you are as a, you know, as a member of the team of what your interests are so that it makes it um, even more relevant for, 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 for your application to this program. Um, and then uh, finally the interview, um, this is something that um, uh, is only by invitation and um, the best candidates who look, um, who look like they could be a good fit on paper will receive an invitation and, and uh, then they will participate in, a, in, a, in, a, in an online interview. Just very quickly, um, I would like to mention uh, uh, the application deadline deadlines. Our priority deadline is February 1 next year. Um, and, and the programs, the all three BA programs will be starting in December, 20, in, sorry, in September 2021. Um, and the details of what these um, deadlines mean are up on our website, but I just wanted to make sure to spell out these two days. February 1 is your primary deadline and April 12 is the last deadline. Okay. Um, Faculty, um, it's, uh, it's always nice for students to know uh, who will be teaching them and what to expect um, in terms of the, the teaching community at the university. Janos, I'm turning to you again. Um, and I have a few things that in mind that, be, that I think belongs here. So who are the, the faculty members um, teaching in the QSS program? Will they be full-time? Um, and also what are professors like at CEU? And what does it mean for a BA student to have close contact with professors? Why does it matter? Yeah. So this uh, will be an interdisciplinary program. And uh, uh, this is already reflected in the department because we have an interdisciplinary department where there are physicists, uh, sociologists. And uh, by the time uh, the program starts, we will have a... Uh, uh, data scientists, we will have a statistician. So the, the spectrum will already reflect this interdisciplinarity. Uh, sure, all the mandatory courses will be taught by full-time uh, faculty members. And uh, even, even the other programs, we, we have full-time faculty members, but it should be emphasized, uh, as uh, Tiago already mentioned, that we make use of the character of CU. So we are uh, going to uh, have courses which are taught by other departments, by many departments actually, because we have this very colorful program. Uh, so this, this is a, a strength of our, our uh, uh, BA program. Uh, what is the advantage of the small classes and the close contact to the professors? Well, I think uh, this is a huge advantage because in most um, undergraduate courses, you are a member of a huge crowd. You have hundreds of students ar around you and you feel a little lost because uh, there is no personal contact to the professors. This is totally different at CU. At CU, you have a class uh, more or less of the size of what you had at high school. And you can have a, a very good uh, collegial relationship to the professor, which helps you in study, which helps you in finding the, character, the, the career path and, and uh, helps you evolving personally. So I think this is, this is really a huge advantage of, of uh, CE. The characterization of the professors. This is, of course, very difficult because I am part of that. What I what I feel is that the atmosphere in general at CU and in particular at our department is very good, very collegial, very helpful, very cool. I should say because we have some young young professors who who have uh, forgotten uh, their youth. And, and uh, I think that the relationship to the students is really very good. Thank you. I wanted to add uh, or to clarify to the audience that um, the, so the enrollment uh, for, for the BA program in uh, quantitative social, social sciences that we are looking at next year is 25. So we're looking at the class of 25 students in the Q 
QSS program, another 25 students for the PTE next year, and another 25 for the CPS program. So the, un the entire undergraduate class, we're talking about 75 students in total. So that's what we mean when we say small. It will be really small. And that also means that in the first year when you have your um, all the classes are mandatory, then probably or 25 students will be in this in the, attending the same classes. But then starting from the second year, you break up into even smaller groups of five or seven or 10 or three, depending on what the what your choices are. OK, and we reached our last um, topic today. Uh, career pr perspectives. Um, I would like to start by by talking a little bit about what CU as an institution does um, to prepare students for life after graduation. Um, so we have a very strong um, career development services team with a dedicated uh, BA advisor who starts reaching out to students from even before they st start studying at CU. Um, our colleagues in career services, that's what they did. Um, they, they reached out to the um, to the students um, around August, uh, send some, uh, send them something to read, um, to prepare them for working together from September. And uh, now they are starting to schedule um, them uh, for for uh, personal meetings to start thinking about um, uh, their future, basically. Um, but um, a preparation for 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 career or life after graduation also means that. Um, students uh, at CU have an opportunity to consult very closely with an academic advisor, with a supervisor, with a lot of people. Are, a lot of people are there to help them with decisions on, you know, what majors to choose, what minors to choose, what are the advantages of one over the other, uh, what electives to sign up for, and what's the um, uh, you know how to decide what to choose and what will be the consequences. What is the difference between the capstone and the thesis, the capstone project and the thesis, and how do you go about that? But also about careers. Um, and then, um, lastly, um, CEU is a is a university that is small but has a huge network in the world. Um, and I'm also thinking about um, the more than 300 public lectures that CEU offers every year on various topics. So there's a, um, a tremendous amount uh, of opportunity for students at all levels to work, uh, to network with people, pe people in their fields, um, professionals, but also researchers. Um, uh, and this, I think, allows for, um, for, uh, for a much uh, better perspective on, on how to continue after graduation. So if we speak in terms of the QSS program, and I'm, I'm looking at um, Tiago, at Janos, both of you, um, what can one do with a QSS degree? What are some typical paths that are realistic for graduates, both in academia, studying together, but also work? What are some fields or industries that um, QSS graduate would be able to apply for a job in? Yeah. So there are many possible paths that uh, a QSS graduate could take. So as I mentioned, one of them is academic. So uh, uh, there, there's ample opportunity for academic research uh, in quantitative social science. It's a very rich academic field. It is unlikely to change anytime soon. On the contrary, it should only increase. So it should be very easy for a graduate to take a, do a master somewhere, a PhD somewhere on this and beyond. This is essentially very open-ended and uh, very attractive, I would say, for, uh, for the point of view of re employers of, uh, of re those seeking to employ researchers in academia, but uh, this is by no means the only option. So there, are, there, are, and now, of course, students, graduates could go into business, industry, governance, etc. And here, I think the inter interdisciplinary character of the course really comes to fruition. Because there are so many things uh, that you can imagine a, a graduate doing, you know, just working in startups, in NGOs, in journalism, etc. Essentially, anywhere that uh, a quantitative analysis of some social aspect, uh, some aspect of society is required, uh, we expect our students to be uh, to be uh, capable of. of, of of doing this, right? So, like, uh, it's important here to emphasize that due to the nature of the 
of the course, uh, students are not going to have a, a very narrow set of skills. Quite on the contrary, these type of skills are very broad and, uh, and transferable. So they're not going to be super hyper specialized. So I think uh, we expect our guidance to be very attractive uh, in the job market because you're going to be very versatile and they're going to know how to solve problems, how to think, how to frame things, how to frame the questions, etc. So they're going, they should be, you know, Swiss Army knife uh, people, you know, who can uh, think out of the box and they can uh, came up, come up with the original solutions, etc. So this is something that carries across, across the board. Thank you. Um, Jan, do you, do you have may a... add a few things, although uh, Tiago uh, described it uh, very well. Uh, indeed, uh, we, we think that, uh, that uh, uh, our graduates will satisfy an increasing demand in, uh, in experts and in uh, people who are equipped with tools both in social sciences and in uh, quantitative methods. Uh, what I want to add is that uh, although it is true that uh, with this uh, qualification, students can go in academia into many directions from data scientists to sociologists, but uh, we are planning to launch a master's program in uh, computational social science which will already operate when the new students will graduate. Uh, and that is another natural continuation within academia. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to also ask Manran, um, you are doing right now a PhD, so I'm thinking that maybe you are planning to stay in academia. Is that right? Or do you have other plans? Um, actually, um, I'm, I'm still thinking about this question, but the good thing is, um, for example, I have some friends that's graduated one year before me. It's pretty diverse. Some of them stay in academia. Some of them work for startups as the chief data scientist. And some work for actually full stack uh, uh, engi uh, uh, engineer for, um, for some act actually financial uh, company. So uh, I would say that it's, it's pretty diverse, that uh, many possibilities. Okay, thank you. I also wanted to add that uh, we did come up with a, with a, quite a few um, concrete examples um, on the website. If you look at the slide, um, uh, and this is also where you can find out more information about the structure of the program, about all these things. Um, um, we put up a, a, a quite some um, details about the program and also um, specific uh, concrete examples uh, for careers. And also Manran was um, so nice um, and she, uh, for today's session, we wanted to actually to, to show you some of these, but we didn't have time for it. Um, so Manran was kind to, um, to collect a couple of videos uh, that uh, will show you, um, you know, the, a combination of um, of data science and um, and social and social sciences, and how you can use data um, uh, to solve problems in another field. Um, and I also wanted to mention our email address if somebody is interested uh, in more or has questions about admissions about the program. Undergrad admissions at cu.edu is the email address where. Um, somebody will, well, me, <laughs> will answer your questions. So um, I think that we have covered everything we wanted and we have about um, eight more minutes to, to get some questions. Um, I'm looking at the chat box right now. Um, what types of internships might uh, student, students pursue? Are there places to conduct internships in Vienna? Um, I can't see um, all the faces right now. Tiago? I think Janos, Janos raised his hand, so do you okay. want to say yeah. something? So, yeah. uh, let me try to answer quickly. Uh, uh, these opportunities reflect uh, the character of the, of the program. So there will be internships at companies which, with which we have uh, um, working relationships which can be small companies like, like uh, 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 startups or, or uh, small size companies, or it can, they can be larger ones. 
And on the other hand, we, we can also uh, have contact to, uh, to uh, other academic institutions, including research institutes and other universities. Uh, so we can use our uh, academic network for that. It doesn't have to be in Vienna, doesn't have to be in Austria. We have a worldwide uh, network of relationships and that can be used for this purpose. Exactly. Um, what I can say, and this is true for the other two programs as well, that because the program is, is uh, the programs are pretty dense for an undergraduate um, uh, BA, uh, our students typically do internships, especially in the big, in the first years, um, typically do their internships in the summer. And it's very often, some of them do, do it where the university is, if they can, if they can find a good opportunity. The career services um, office, by the way, is the one who helps, uh, also helps students um, uh, understand which, what, what type of companies would be good for them, depending on what they want to try out. Um, but, uh, but also many students go home for the summer um, and they would like to find uh, places where can, yeah, they can do an internship um, in their home country or um, like Janusz said, um, use uh, CU's international network to, to find um, an opportunity somewhere else. Let's not forget that CU has 18,000 alumni around the world who work in um, more than 100 countries, work and live in more than 100 countries. And it's a, it's a very, very loyal community. So another way to find an internship is also uh, through our um, wonderful alumni. Okay, I'm looking at the, the chat box to see if there's, oh yes, I know. Um, there was another um, question earlier that, that came to me and I wanted to, to, ask, uh, to ask you, Tiago and Janos to maybe address that. Um, so what are some, um, what about some, uh, the ethical considerations of data, of big data? How is this something that you, um, touch upon in the program? Is this, is this incorporated in any way? There's a huge responsibility uh, in how you uh, use this data, how data, what kind of data is collected. So can you say a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So absolutely, this is a very important aspect, uh, the ethical considerations of data analysis. And this is part of the course. There's a specific uh, course on this, on the ethics of data analysis and big data, as, which, is, which is obligatory for everyone. And students are expected to take this. Uh, this, uh, this is very, part, very much part of the, of the program. Uh, and this is something that we expect that to also condition uh, the, the, the research projects that the students take and this is some, even some, a topic that they can take, right? There's ob an obvious connection here with, uh, with ethics, right? With the, the broader sense. Uh, so it's with the philosophy, that's what I mean. So, uh, so, so this is absolutely integrated in, in a very important way. Uh, in the course, uh, not only as a separate course, but also we have courses on data management, for example, this is part of the course of data management, how to take uh, privacy, for example, privacy matters into consideration and how to understand the, the issues, etc. So this permeates all the different uh, courses that have to do with, with particular data analysis. So for sure, this is a very important aspect uh, that uh, is part of the program. Thank you. 